Whoa. Hi, I'm John Cartwright, and for two days privately, and seven hours publicly, I was Waddle D Knows, a Twitter account with zero followers that managed to get 2,000, and I did this in seven hours by telling a bunch of lies. So the point of this account was never to be malicious, the plan was always to last a single day and mislead as few people as I possibly can. However, this was meant to last a few hours longer than it did, but unfortunately it was reported on by some outlets, and it got a bit too big, so I had to end it early. But uh, people are responding pretty well to this. I think we're all kind of fed up of the insider culture and everyone pretending they know stuff. So I just wanted to demonstrate how easy this is to do. So I'll show you some behind the scenes of how this started, how the account was made, and how I managed to pull all of this off. So without further ado, let's get into the origin of Waddle D Knows. So the first part of this account was the branding. So I did some research to see what other accounts just like this one kind of do, and most of them tend to have a friendly Nintendo character in the avatar. So I was thinking like, come on, what's, what's the best avatar I can go for? Then of course, this little guy from the Kirby and the Forgotten Land trailer, he's relevant, he's cute, and I'll trust him if he told me that Encanto was getting a game by Bandai Namco. I'd believe him. I broke down typing the name in though, Waddle Dean knows. Why, why did anyone believe that? <laughs> and I put, and I put NCL in his border, Nintendo's headquarters. <laughs> People still believed it. <laughs> so it's almost bordering on parody with the branding, with the icon, with the name, but maybe it's just become so common that we don't even see it as, as satire or parody. We just, <laughs> this is just what these, these accounts do. And um, we're kind of in that culture. And I think that's the reason people believe this in the first place. I, I, don't, I don't blame anyone for believing in this. I think we've just been conditioned to, to be a part of all this because it happens every month, every week, people do this kind of thing. And I just wanted to demonstrate that we shouldn't be trusting this stuff because it's so, so easy. So you may be wondering, John, how the heck did you manage to get a huge chunk of the direct correct? Because if we go through this account, yeah, there's quite a few surprises in there, quite a few hard to guess ones too. So to start off, all the specifics about the direct itself, when it's being announced, when it's airing, how long it is, what kind of direct it is. So how I got this was I put in every date of February possible. I didn't do the weekends because directs don't tend to air on weekends, but every weekday was put into this account. And I got very lucky with the first tweet because the first one was direct announcement is coming tomorrow. I didn't do that for every single day because that would take way too much time. Happy accident. And by the way, one big component, how all of this was sort of covered up, the account was private. No, no one could have seen it. I can delete as much as I want and no one's gonna have any trace of that because no one would have ever seen these tweets. The first leak was Breath of the Wild 2 is not shown. And this was one of many Breath of the Wild 2 leaks. I had Link can fly, I had Link can pet the dog and it's showcased in the trailer. Like, it's like a spotlight. I've got a bunch of, of weird stuff in there. Uh, there's a bunch of games that I predicted that weren't in here too. Mario Odyssey 2. I was kind of betting it would focus on Peach, but the game didn't air at all, so... Well... And then we've got Splatoon. Salmon Run is back. So this direct only focused on Salmon Run for Splatoon. But of course, that was not my guess initially. Salmon Run is back was one of the very last things I tweeted about Splatoon, because before that it was like, oh, there's an open world campaign, there's a bunch of new multiplayer maps, everything's back from the prior games. But Salmon Run is back ended up being the whole focus, so deleted all the others. Now, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 gets very specific and accurate to what the game actually was. And how I achieved this was I stole the rumor from someone else. So Imran Khan for Fanbyte made this exact rumor last year. And this is something many Grifter accounts do. They take other people's rumors, they sort of like shuffle them in with their own, and then it's credible because something's correct even though it belongs to someone else. But who cares? Because we got the credibility, baby. Next Level Games doing Mario Strikers, again, I put all their franchises, Luigi's Mansion, Punch-Out, so pfft, happy that happened. Valve games coming to Switch, that sort of came out of nowhere. I'm preparing a Valve video right now, so Valve's on the brain. And I thought, yeah, it could happen. It did happen. I didn't specify Portal. <laughs> and in fact, later on, I kind of doubled down on this after the account was sort of blown up. I said, well, I said Valve games because it's not just Portal, it's also Half-Life. And one person 
with like 50,000 followers retweeted this, and they said, yeah, <laughs> this guy knows what he's talking about. I had no clue about Portal. But thank you, guy, for giving credibility to what all D knows. I gave myself away a little bit with this one, and people noticed. So one tweet says NES and Super Nintendo Online is still getting games, by the way. It is, and Earthbound is, and Earthbound's even specified. But I say Earthbound is one of them. Earthbound's the only one. <laughs> There's Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings. So my original list had Murasami Castle and a bunch of other stuff. But no, only Earthbound was the only one. So if that were to be believable, I should have just said Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings is coming to NES Online, but... No, instead we have this really weird sentence structure. Yeah. And Triangle Strategy getting a demo? Of course it is. Bravely Default 2 did. Octopath Traveler did. It makes sense. And um, I think Chocobo Racing was another one. Chocobo GP. I said Cloud's going to be playable. Cloud was playable in the first game. Of course he's going to be playable. Though for some reason he's, he's in like a season pass. That's weird. That's weird square. With Fire Emblem, I got very lucky. I said Koei Tecmo is working on a new Fire Emblem. Yeah, of course they are. They did three houses. It makes sense that they are. But I was betting they would do another three houses kind of game. I was not betting that they would do a Warriors game, because Age of Calamity was so recent, but they are. And it just kind of worked that Koei Tecmo were doing a Warriors game, because technically, this tweet is not a lie. They are. <laughs> Koei Tecmo are working on Fire Emblem. I had a bunch of vague tweets that could have been correct. A big early PS4 game getting ported. No Man's Sky! Hi, No Man's Sky! So I had like 200 tweets I had to clean up, and honestly, I was thinking of cancelling this idea, because after the direct aired, I thought to myself, did I really get any of this? And I was cleaning up, and by the end I was like, oh, actually, this is most of it. <laughs> like, there's, there's obviously big ones that weren't in there, but this is most of it. And the big one that was missing was Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC. So I kind of tried to play it off as if that was normal not to know. And you know what, maybe it was normal not to know. A lot of development teams are very secretive. So sometimes even the person who knows the most stuff, even the person most involved or positioned in, in a company, might not know of a game, just because it's so secret. So basically what I said was, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC was a surprise. Doesn't seem many people outside the dev team knew it was coming up. Um, I think that's actually quite a reasonable thing to say. Insiders don't know everything. Even proper, legitimate insiders don't know everything. And by the way, if you do know something, and you're positioned in a company, you will still not know enough to run a dedicated account. Any account that is specifically an insider, dedicated to posting rumors and leaks, every day, every couple of days, every week, they are not legit. There's no way any account does that. There are people like Practical Brush on Reddit. This guy's basically nailed a bunch of directs, but the way he does this is he only comes out every now and then, only when needed. He's not just posting rumors all the time. But yeah, now that this is all done, I made the account public, and to bring some attention, I made a fake Twitter account. But this didn't work. So I made an account called Cooper the Slow, and unfortunately it seems that no one wants to listen to an account with zero followers and zero tweets to promote another account with zero followers and zero tweets. So. I went to game FAQs, and I made another account! And this one, again, has no posts, no history. And people did call this out, but it didn't stop the account growing. The game FAQs thread has 10 pages now. This is editing, John. It's actually 20. This ended up on Resetera, on Famiboards, on 4chan, on Reddit. It kind of went everywhere. So I thought, how do we keep this up? What do the other accounts tend to do? And there's a few things you can do. I didn't do all the steps I could have done, but one thing I did do was tell people what they want to hear. So I said that GoldenEye is coming, and the reason I said GoldenEye is coming is because one, that's already a rumor, and two, people want to see GoldenEye. So people are going to see all these rumors and be like, huh, this guy seems to know what he's talking about, and I want GoldenEye. I'm going to trust him. <laughs> that's the general gist. You tell people what they want to hear after showing a semi, a semi-successful success rate. And then I said obvious stuff, because obvious stuff is really easy to get right, and people can go, huh, they got this right, they got this right, they're legit. So the obvious thing I said was Mario Strikers is going to have the drip feed approach. We kind of saw the roster in the trailer, and it looks tiny. So much like Aces and uh, Super Rush, I predicted that we are not going to have all the characters at launch, and we're getting more. And I specified Pauline and one of the Sand Kingdom NPCs. <laughs> This was never going to be proven right because the account was never going to exist for very long. 
But this is the kind of thing these accounts do. They just try and play you with very obvious things. And another obvious thing I said was Half-Life 2 is coming. Now that might not seem that obvious, but the company porting Portal to Switch is NVIDIA. And NVIDIA ported not only Portal, but Half-Life 2 to the NVIDIA Shield console. So it makes sense that Half-Life 2 would be coming as well. But then I wanted to post something unexpected. And the reason I did this is because this account was looking pretty safe. We have a bunch of predictions from the Direct, which turned out to be true, but everything else is just predictable. Half-Life 2 on Switch? Probably. It's probably gonna happen. Mario Strikers roster being small at launch? Probably. So then I said, Nintendo's publishing an Encanto game developed by Bandai Namco. Reveal a schedule for May. That's specific. No one, no one has predicted Encanto by Bandai Namco. So yeah, the whole reason for that was just to go out there. And if this account, if this account were to be long term, I would not have specified May. I would have said just started development because that gives me two years, three years, <laughs> and in that time, in the, if three years passes and this account is still growing, and someone says, "Hey, where's Encanto?" Who cares? Because this account would have already grown like 20,000, 30,000 followers, and most of those guys would be new people who don't remember the Encanto tweet. And I could have just said, oh, it was cancelled. Had development trouble. So this, this tweet here was just to kind of raise the stakes, but it wouldn't have mattered if Encanto never came out, because I don't think anyone would have cared. And if they did care, they'd be in the minority, because everyone else is just feeding into my hands for my rumours. Mario and Luigi, Superstar Dreams is coming. So at this point, I was done. Waddle Dee knows was completely finished, and I was just going to leave this account until morning. But then, I noticed some new sites reported on this account. They were saying this guy got the direct right, and he's saying GoldenEye's coming, and as are Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD. And I went... No! <laughs> I, I frankly expected better. I thought they would verify this, I thought they'd try and get in touch, or they'll just look at it and say it's just some Twitter account, we have these all the time, let's let's wait. This guy specified Encanto's coming in May, let's wait until May, and if Encanto doesn't come, ignore him. If it does, then report on him. But no, uh, unfortunately it did get reported on, and this actually got me annoyed. It got me quite a bit annoyed, and so when I revealed the account was a fake, I actually kind of called out an outlet. And I'm sorry, I actually do apologize for that, it, it wasn't necessary. But hopefully, doing that has made them think more in the future. This kind of thing shouldn't happen again. And even if I didn't handle it the best way, I do think it did some good. Because this account was just an experiment. This account was never meant to last more than a day. But someone else could have done this. Someone else could have, could have lasted for years doing this thing. And if news outlets are ported on them repeatedly, that would have caused damage. That would have been long-term damage. Whereas this didn't cause any damage to any companies, any developers, and if anything, it's just kind of set an example. So in the future when people try this, people on forums, on Twitter, are reporters on news outlets, I think they will go, huh. Remember what already knows though? Remember how that went? And that was what I wanted to happen. I didn't want news outlets to get involved, but I wanted people on forums just to kind of use this as a reference for the future. So, while it went further than I wanted it to, I'm still happy with the result. I still think this was a good outcome. And the responses are all great. I mean, I lost around 600 followers, but 1,369 stuck around. And many people called this one of the best insider accounts, so thank you. This was the story of what all D knows. It's ridiculously easy to pretend to be an insider, to pretend you know something. So if you see this kind of account in the wild, and you're thinking, should I believe this? Shouldn't I believe this? I think the best move, wait for them to build up an accurate portfolio of rumors spanning multiple time spans. And if they are all correct, if they're like 95% correct, then yeah, you probably can believe them. But if they're wrong so many times and only every now and then get it right, then I mean, what's the saying? A broken clock is right twice a day? I frankly don't have any respect for these accounts. They're wasting everyone's time, they're lying to them, and they're leading them on. So, if there's an account just like this one, just like Waddle Dee knows, please just move on from it. It's not worth your time. But I think this experiment was a success! So, Waddle Dee knows you have, you've cemented yourself in Twitter history. Hopefully, you lead by example. He knows. But thank you for watching. 
I will never do this again. I am sorry.